my we did it ladies and germs we made it into another week of the rec poker podcast here we are assembled ready audio cue error free and with the wizards from the rec poker panel i'm your host jim reed i'm so excited to be here i'd like to thank website amp and the running aces hotel racetrack and casino for making all this magic possible um, i'm bluff Storini in the home game and you can learn about me and the rest of the members of the Wrecking Crew by going to rec.poker slash crew. Uh, but you don't have to take my word for it. You can hear from them themselves here tonight. Uh, Wrecking Crew members, why don't you share a little bit about yourself with Rec Poker Nation? I'm Chris Jones. You can find me 5x5 five five on Poker Stars and Twitter. And to be clear, we're talking about a post on the forums, uh, which we changed the title to after the fact. So Kim is the smart one and I am the moron, if that wasn't already clear. I am John Somsky, and my, I'm known as Poker Geek MN Everywhere, and I think everyone already knew everything Chris said. <laughs> I'm Kim Kilroy. I'm Pat Pat. You're the smart one. <laughs> everywhere, except for <laughs> on Poker Stars, I'm Fergie 56, and yeah, I'll agree with that. What they said. <laughs> So we're having a, a slightly above average fun time here on the Rec Poker podcast, which we always do. And um, every week we are battling it out in the nightly home game. Every week we are mastering the technical process of podcast generation and having a great time doing it. And every week we take one forum post from the Rec.Poker forums and talk about it here on the show. Um, so last week we had such a great time talking about a post by our own Chris Jones 5x5 five five, that we said we got to do that again. So Chris has a, uh, a post here, picking off bluffs, and then it may or may not involve three bet pots. We can get into that later. But picking off bluffs is the gen is the title we're going with, and um, it's a spot that I think everyone should be thoughtful about um, when they're when they're playing, particularly in tournament poker. So Chris, why don't you talk a little bit about uh, the setup here and what made it interesting for you? Sure. Uh, this is a uh, we're early on in a tournament. We have a ton of chips. Um, so does everyone. So uh, we have like 120 big blinds here and villain has about 90, 90 odd big blinds. Um, so we're all very deep. Um, we, uh, we open uh, with ace of diamonds, jack of clubs, um, and it folds around to the small blind who calls and then the big blind folds. Um, and the flop comes, so ace of diamonds, jack of clubs. Uh, the flop comes king of diamonds, nine of diamonds, eight of hearts. Um, so not the best flop in the world, but not the worst. Um, I think this is uh, a clear uh, C-bet from my perspective. We have the ace of diamonds, um, which can um, both develop into something, but also uh, protect our hand a little bit. Um, the king is a very good hot card to represent from our, our pre-flop uh, opening range. Um, and it's a hand that the small blind, when a small blind flats, I wanted to talk about it, small blind flat flatting ranges here a bit. Um, it can certainly contain some kings. It can certainly contain a lot of these kind of nine eights or these, these hands that kind of they pocket eights, pocket nines. It can contain a lot of things like jack 10. It can contain a lot of... Um, of that kind of range, a lot of Broadway uh, cards. So um, this is also a flop that can hit our opponent quite well. Um, so I can see a case for potentially checking this back, um, but um, I elect to see bet. And I don't know if we want to talk about that or just go. I think this hand gets more interesting as we go uh, a little bit deeper, but do we want to talk about I just see that at all. I had one thing about the flop here that's interesting. We have such an interesting hand for this flop because we've got the ace of diamonds, which blocks the nut flush, and we've got a jack, which blocks the made straight. So we're in blocker town, and I, that kind of has a different power on the flop than it does at the end of the hand, depending on how the action goes. And I always, in a way, I feel like we can gain some clarity from our opponent's range by betting here when we have strong blockers like this, because it makes the draws much less 
present in their range when they do continue, which makes it easier for us to put them on a made hand. Now, you know, that can come in handy later. By the same token, you're kind of you're removing big. a lot of those. Well, yeah, exactly. The sizings and, and, and you're targeting a range that's mostly made hands. And, and usually when you're seabedding, you're trying to get the kind of folds that you're now blocking a little bit. Some of those, those draw hands that I think are, aren't going to now. So I, I always, I always find this to be an interesting little tension. Do you guys find that you in spots like this, did the blockers make you more likely or less likely to, uh, to see that? Well, I'm blocking the nut flash draw, not the nut flash. Yes. First yes. Of all. Yes. Um, yes and no. So it depends on their action. So if they just call, then I put them on a possible hand versus a, they're more likely to have a hand versus a bluff because we're blocking some of their bluffs. Yeah. So. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. And then, so uh, as as played, did you elect to make the C-bet there, so, Chris? So I do C-bet. Um, and I, I, I usually C-bet, you know, in this kind of spot, um, between 30 and 40%. I tend to go a little bit higher uh, towards the more 40% range when, um, when there's like a flush draw on board. Um, so I, I go to the higher end of my range. It's about, I put in about uh, 40% pot and we get check raised um, to three, basically three X uh, check raise. Um, and this is the spot where we could just give up. And I think it's probably the potentially the right answer. Um, but I like this kind of hand Um particularly because I have the ace of diamonds, it means my opponent has fewer diamond combos, uh, a lot fewer diamond combos. Um, and um, it's a kind of hand that can get very interesting as we progress. So, um, but I, I think this might be a mistake um, that we may want to, to call this kind of check raise with, with better, with better holdings, but I do uh, because of all the blockers we were just talking about. Um, and because I think um, my opponent can sometimes have a lot of draws that we're ahead of, like basically any flush draw they have, we're beating right now. Any uh, thing like a straight draw that they have, we're beating, uh, except uh, if they have a pair plus flush draw. So unless they have the eight of diamonds plus whatever else um, then otherwise we're, we're, we're beating it. And so for that reason, I, I like to continue. Hang on. We don't have, we don't have a flush draw. We have a right. But we're beating draw. any of our opponents flush draws currently. Yeah. Cause they're flush draws. They can't have, have an ace. An ace right. So we, yeah. right. so, yeah. so that's why I like understood. to call. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go I ahead, think John. I kind of like that. And if you, you can put an awful lot of pressure on them if they have a flush draw and uh, another diamond comes because you've got the ace. Um, I mean, not quite as much as in PLO, but you can still put a fair amount of uh, pressure on them with the naked ace of diamonds. Mm -hmm. So what do we think? What are we putting our opponent on? What's the range that makes this check raise here? I mean, I guess, I guess it still has all is yeah. Just because we've got the ace of diamonds and one of the jacks, there's still just a lot of those hands that you're describing in here. I guess it's it's a it's a coordinated enough board that there's all sorts of semi bluffs that he can still be getting in here, and yeah. and you're ahead of enough of them that it makes sense to continue. And you that know, for sense. value, I think he's got sets of nine, sets of eights. He's got nine eights suited. Um, <clears throat> May, maybe some king nines and king eights um you know that i think that's a less frequent small blind uh defend but some people will do it especially suited mm -hmm. um so i think those are the value we're talking about um really do you mm -hmm. agree there's no way they have pocket kings um right there's 
And I don't th- may you know I have seen recently some opponents ch- uh, check raising um, you know weird hands like um, you know I came across somebody yesterday who check raised like on very similar kind of board like nine seven on this kind of board hmm. um, which I don't I don't know I mean that that could be something that's an interesting new play and correct but I I don't think that's good. But could be. But anyway, I th- so there could be some of that in there. There could be some 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 weird pairs that we beat, um, or that we don't beat. That we don't beat. Yeah. That are um, that are doing this as well. Yeah, it feels like the non-value hands that they're check raising here have to either have a ten, a jack, or two diamonds in them, and then it's possible for any of those to also have a pair. Um, mm-hmm. So that's the tricky part of it here. Because even their draw hands are, it's not uncommon for them to have caught a piece of this board as a, as a made hand as well. So yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. So it really does make, you know, the cards that you have, not only the strength of your hand, but also the cards that, the hands that you're unblocking and blocking. I can see why that does become particularly relevant here. And, and I still have, um, I mean, I, I still have pocket kings in my range. I still have ace king in my range. I still have a lot of um, really strong holdings, which our opponent really can't have. Right. So, um, which is going to lead into the the uh, the turn, which I'll, we can talk a lot. Uh, so the turn is a complete brick. It's the two of clubs. Um, so our board is king of diamonds, nine of diamonds, eight of hearts, two of clubs, um, and the. Um, our opponent checks to us. Now I think the conventional, I don't know uh, that we should talk about this because um, I have started with, especially with these kind of like blocker heavy hands where I also have uh, a potential nuts advantage are, are boards, which I like to double barrel on. Um, mm-hmm. And so uh, because also if I want to represent diamonds on the river, um, I would be betting if I had ace jack of diamonds, mm-hmm. I would be betting it here. And if I don't bet my ace jack offsuit here, I I can no longer credibly represent a very well the nut flush on the river. Um, so that that's a reason why I'm taking this line. So I do elect to bet um, and barrel on this. Um, I'd be curious what you think. Uh, and I I elect to go not that big i elect to go because i feel like um i'm gonna i'm gonna hear from i want to give room because this is really gonna help me determine where this hand is headed um if i get flatted here um i think i can rule out some of the strongest holdings Uh, if i get check raised here i'm just done um you know good nice set have a nice day. <laughs> um, and uh, if I, uh, I mean, if I get fold, that's a wonderful happening. So, um, so anyway, I, I don't know. What do you think about this turn bet? You know, I, I think I kind of like it. Um, I don't think it is a bet I would have made, but I like that it gives you a chance to represent the flush you know, since you do have the ace of diamonds, so you know that they are not on the nut flush draw. Um, and you can still credibly represent ace king as well, which is one of the more likely hands you're up against. So I like it. Yeah, and it's it's a spot where our hand has just gotten worse and worse every street of play so far. And now with this brick turn, the old, the best hand we can make is going to be a top uh, a top pair hand. So, and that's not even going to happen very often. So, mostly, given the action, we're still beating some of those some of those uh, draws with our ace high. But if they continue here, we're basically going to be in a position where I think we have to bluff the river when the diamond comes in to win the hand. Um, and they're probably not going to get out of the way with a with a better hand than ours um, otherwise. So it really comes down to it really comes down to having that like multi street plan, which I like. And and you are making it less likely that 
they have the kind of value hands. But ah, yeah, I mean, in my in my belly, I want to be making that barrel when this comes, you know, like a jack or a ten or something that gives me some more equity because uh, it feels like such a naked play here. But I think maybe that's what I like about it the most because this really is like a setup play. Do you do you plan to get folds with this bet? I guess that's my one question. The sizing of your bet, like, yes, are you? Okay, I think so who, I think I should I should get folds from uh, non diamond uh, gut shots. So yep. I sh- the the queen jacks, the queen tens, the um, I think I should get folds from from all of those, which I do think is a large you know a good part of this range. Um, I think I should potentially get folds from you know any weird hands that might still be in there like ace 10 or Mm -hmm. some of those as well um so yeah i i expect to get folds from the those kinds of hands that we're hanging on what what buy-in was this tournament this was a 50 it was the 55 dollar special sunday special so this is still on level three, right? Correct. So are people like check raising with gut shots? Some people are. Yeah, for sure. There's, a, there's some really good quality players in, some, in this field. But on level three in the tournament, I just don't see in this sort of buy-in that they're check raising that many gut shots here. I don't know. Yeah, I mean. I could be uh, wrong. I, I I would be you'd be maybe surprised. I think there are the 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 player pool at this. I mean, you know, I could be wrong, but uh, the player pool I think is pretty getting uh, stronger and stronger on ACR. Mm-hmm. And I think that there is um, uh, once you get past the the fifteen dollar buy in level, you get into the thirty and fifty dollar buy in levels that. Uh, players are really capable of check raising uh, in appropriate spots, which um, which means you have to call them more, which means you have to sort of have plans for how you're going to address check raises, um, that kind of thing. But, yeah, I do think check raises are the new C-bets. They're the thing that people are catching on to. Like, oh, there's a reason why this is such a powerful play. And, you know, Chris says people are figuring out how to use it in a, in a more correct sense, but they're also using it very incorrectly in a bunch of other correct. places. Uh, correct. But I, but I think people are getting out, out of line with their check raising in a way that, that we're not really used to. That's for yes, sure. I think that's true. And so like, I, th- I wouldn't even be surprised if somebody like had just total nonsense here, you know, like six, five suited or something. Um, you know, I, I could see them check raising that and, or, and uh, that's maybe not a good example. Six five. Yeah, they're supposed to check raise six five. Suited. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, that's I would tell I, I you they're say, supposed to do that, like a certain amount six, of the four, time. Four. Let's say six four suited. I, I kind of <laughs> didn't. I discounted the gut shot. I didn't mean to give it okay. a gut shot. Right, right. No, right. six four suit is not in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I've ju- I ju- I've just been seeing some some strange ones in there. I think people are starting to play around with them a bit. But anyway, um, I do think that the things like queen ten, queen jack are going to be in here. Cool. Queen Jack, yeah, Queen Ten, yeah. Yep, yeah. that makes sense. I like that. Yeah. I think that's a good and it's nice that you can both get those folds, but also sort of set up this this play. Um yeah, okay, that's very interesting. And the other thing that this bet does to me is um and this is where I, I'd be curious about your thoughts, but I, I think that it is a rare opponent that can have sets of nine sets of eights or nine eight um and flat call this turn bet Mm -hmm. um given how deep we are given that that i have put two bets in uh and called a check raise um and there's a flush draw on board i think all of those things tend would tend to make somebody who if you're sitting there with pocket nines being like let's i I don't want to see another card. Let's just get it. I'm, I'm. You're going to pay to see the next card, buddy. So, <laughs> one of the, when I get flatted here, 
this is the key to part of the question I'm asking about when we get to the river is, can we discount all that value? Mm. Cause we, we do get flattened. And so I make an, I, I make an assumption that those hands no longer exist in range. Do you think that's fair? I think this board is wet enough that most people, most of the time, are not going to just flat with a set. Um, that doesn't yeah. mean it's impossible and no one could do it, but I do think it is going to be less common. So when I put this in the solver, they call, they flat here with almost 60% of the range that they called your, that they took this line with. Mm-hmm. Are you on the, on the turn, Kim? You mean they call the turn bet? On the turn, yeah. Okay, and 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 that and their entire range at that point so has already gone most, through the check raise on the flop. Yeah. Yeah, and I think a lot of that range is flush draws. Correct. Like I think a lot of the range is flush draws. Yeah. Well, let's hear what our friend Jonathan Little has to say about this, and then maybe we can talk a little bit about how Kim uses tools like this to examine ranges and problems like this in her monthly hand history review session. We'll catch up with that just after this. Have you ever wondered whether you should call a preflop raise or three bet instead? What do you do when you have a flush draw? Do you raise it or do you just call? What do you do with ace king when you miss the flop? Are you tired of guessing about what the right play is with your particular hand? Well, my name is Jonathan Little, and I am a two-time World Poker Tour champion and creator of PokerCoaching.com, where we offer over a thousand interactive hand quizzes where you play a hand and then get real-time feedback from our world-class pros. Don't guess and don't stress. Just register for your free account at PokerCoaching.com slash RecPoker right now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't anger Jonathan Little, folks. Don't let him catch you stressing or guessing. Just go to pokercoaching.com slash rec poker and sign up there. And good luck to you on your poker journey. Remember us when you're out there crushing. So, uh, yeah, let's take a little second here to talk about Kim Petfet Kilroy, who gets together on, wait a second, is it the second Tuesday of every month, Kim, or is it the fourth Fourth. Tuesday? It's the fourth Tuesday of every month for the Hand History Review Group. And uh, Kim's been on a tear taking hands from our forum, just like this on the podcast but getting much more in-depth using tools like Floptimal, Odin, other solvers and things like that, like we do in our forums, uh, in our the focus group that Chris Jones runs every month as well. Um, but these ones are just focused on one hand that uh, uh, people in the membership submit, and any premium member can come along and, and join Kim for these uh, expeditions into solver land. So Kim, you said you, you put uh, Odin to work. For this one, I have a I friend did. whose dog name is Odin, so I always think of yeah. putting him to work when I do this. I'm excited. <laughs> so, and what what did you learn from that? I did. I did. Do we? Can I share screen or no? Um, is yeah, that I not think a we can. In this? We can. I mean, it's an audio podcast, so I'll tell people you should read like I do every time. You should go to the Rec Poker forums and get uh, all the good information you can there. Why don't we take a quick sojourn into video land here? And everyone can go and watch all these podcasts on uh, YouTube. They're free there. Search for the Rec Poker community. And uh, then you can see what Kim is going to be sharing on her screen here. Uh, Kim, you should be able to share now. Let me know if you are having any trouble. Because I'm a visual learner. I don't know about you guys. So it helps me a lot just to be able to see that grid laid out like that. So we're looking at uh, Odin here, which Kim's okay. working on. And let's just take a quick spin through this one, Kim. All right. So what I'd, they only do up to 50 big blinds in the multi-table tournament uh, scenarios. So this could be different uh, seeing as we're playing a lot deeper than this. But we'll go for this, go with this one because that's all that's there for now. So what I've done is I've already plugged in the um, raise uh, and the call by the small blind. And I agree with all that, what was said before with the small blind being, you know, heavy in the uh, sort of Broadway cards and suited, suited aces and things like that. So... 
we'll we'll pick this up at the flop and we go with a small blind check. Um, and we have a small, a fairly small bet by Chris. Um, we'll do 33% because it doesn't give exactly 40%, but we do the, that. And now we see the small blind is, this is the small blinds range over here. And they're supposed to call, uh, 43%, full 40%. And they're supposed to raise just maybe 20% of their range. So, they raise, they raise fairly small, I think. They didn't raise huge. Um, so we'll put that in. And now we're back at Chris's. Um, and we have Ace Jack offsuit right here. So we can go down here and look. And we have Ace Jack, his exact hand, he's actually supposed to fold a lot. All the blue is folds. So he's supposed to fold most of his ace jack suited. Uh, ace of diamonds, jack of clubs, which is specifically what he has, he's supposed to fold that 80% of the time and, and call it 20% of the 79 and 21% of the time here. So seeing as he called, we're going to put in the call as the, so it's not a mistake to call, but we're only supposed to do it 20% of the time. So if you're, you know, that's opponent dependent. Uh, if you think you can outplay them post flop, if you're running a random number generator, power and suits ends up, uh, you're running power suits, whatever we, we are, we're calling here. So we're, we'll put, we'll put them in as a call. And for our listeners, uh, what what Kim's doing, if you're not watching, Kim's just going through and setting the parameters in Odin, uh, this program, as we go to just describe to the computer the action that's happening. And then the computer is showing, the solver is showing a range of hands and how each combo should be played in that range. Right. So we'll plug in the two of clubs, which is the turn card here. And our small blind opponent checks. So we'll plug in check. And we will see what we are supposed to do. And then we'll see what Chris did. <laughs> so with our ace of diamonds, jack of clubs, we're actually supposed to bet most of the time. And we're supposed to use a small bet most of the time. So kudos to him that he mm -hmm. follows through with that. And we will bet small here on this. And... Our opponent will call. Yeah, this is the range I'm really interested in. And now. what was our river? Jack of diamonds, which I think is mm. uh, Jack of we, diamonds. We hit the uh, we hit what I thought was a when I saw it as like money card, and then yeah. we can describe what the action is. So we're <laughs> our, here's our jack of diamonds, and our opponent is supposed to check sixty percent with a, what looks like a lot of made hands here all, all his most of his kings is jacks king jack king ten so his top pairs um and he is supposed to raise with or he's supposed to go all in with i guess some of his flushes all of his flushes i think go all in and um yeah, I don't know that he has any bluffs that are all in, except for maybe nine seven suited. And see, so that's yeah, nine seven. One of the clubs. things as I'm looking at this, and one of the reasons, so I so he does go all in, and he over yeah. bets the pot two to, two x the pot. Um, and he's I'm, only supposed to either go all in or fold. Right. Not or, he's not supposed to make any right. other type of a bet here. Yeah. And I'm sitting there with Ace Jack now. Um, on a, a, a reminder, if you can't see all this video, we, we have a king of diamonds, nine of diamonds, eight of hearts, two of clubs, jack of diamonds. And to me, that jack of diamonds eliminates a ton more mm. of the potential flush draws that are out there. Mm -hmm. To me, the, the only flush draws that are possibly out there are the straight flush, the queen, ten of diamonds, or uh flushes with an eight in them so uh ten eight of diamonds eight seven of diamonds maybe is possible from the small blind that does a check raise with the bottom pair in the flush draw 
So those are, but, but really I'm down to three combos of flush draws. One of which I think I would be curious what this thinks, but I, I think is a gross mistake to two X shove the immortal nuts. Um, <laughs> I think that, that is just, that's got to be a mistake. Um, Maybe not, but that's that's the queen ten this is, this that we're talking is, about here. Odin here is flush. saying that they should only have two sizings, but I think it. Yeah, if we have queen ten of diamonds here and we've just flopped the straight flush to do a two x over bet pot, when I have a lot of hands like that have the ace of diamonds in them, or potentially even the ace flush. I don't know. I mean, you're going to get called by the the nut flush. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's worthwhile, but I, to me that what it starts to do for me is it starts to, I start to question about like, I actually beat a lot of like, there's, there's, if I call here, I, I'm losing to no other value. I don't think. Because they wouldn't be shoving those hands is what you mean? Because they're they're not going to be shoving. shoving. Well, I don't think they get there with their sets. And I don't think they get there with their nine, eight, uh, you know, two pairs. And I don't think they have any straights left Mm -hmm. um, other than queen, 10 of diamonds. Yeah. Cause we did say that turn bet was supposed to fold out those other ones, those unflushing Broadway cards. Right. So that, that is consistent. And so I did ultimately fold. Cause it's so big, but yeah, I was wondering, I marked yeah. it for a review and I wondered if it's a mistake. I wonder if this is a hand we should call. So they're supposed to be betting here with pretty much all of their, their queen, 10 of diamonds on they're the turn, you mean? Betting. on the turn, on the King? turn. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they're supposed to be betting here with a lot of their flushes, flush flushes and flush draws. Flush draws. There's no flushes made, but they're supposed to be betting out with a lot of them. So when they just check here on the turn, I think that that uh, allows you when you bet and they just call. Mm-hmm. So you bet right, and they yep. just called. Correct. And what was the what was the pot? It was a bet of one forty seven. It was almost twice the size. Almost twice yeah. the size of the pot. Correct. Yeah, it was almost a two x pot bet. Right. So we had when we have the jack of as played with this hand because they should have gotten a little more spicy before if they had <laughs> those nutted hands, and when they uh, bet all in on this on this river. Um, the solver wants you to call a hundred percent of the time with your hand. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I really did consider it for a long time. Like I, I, uh, and I marked it to re- I did ultimately fold, but, uh, it felt, it felt like, Gross. Felt it felt like there's two, there's <laughs> basically, I put them on two combos of flush draws that beat me. Uh, the ones with eights in them, because I don't think they have queen ten. So I think it's it's ten eight and eight seven of diamonds that um, that I'm losing to. And otherwise, I think I win. But I the problem that I I couldn't get to what are the bluffs? Like now, I, I kept... is there? Okay, here's the only thing. This doesn't fit with anything else that we've said today. But this this action sometimes. This bet is like someone's just trying to get you to fold a king. And that's all they are thinking about. And they're like, this board has come so lousy for you with your king that they can now get you to fold the king. Um, And I, part of me is just like the, the instinct player in me is just saying like, that's what this bet is supposed to be but it's not part of a bigger plan. So like, was this player someone that you felt like 
when they check raised the flop, like, did you have anything that like, is this the kind of player that you think is going to tie that to a later action or is it just a series of different events? I'd never seen this player before. And I played nine hands with them at this point. Oh, so it's, okay. it's like, uh, it's, they're, they're a complete, you know, blank slate. Cause sometimes I wonder like some of the people that we're playing against, they're not that good at telling the stories, mm-hmm. but maybe they don't know how bad they are at telling the stories. So they don't know that they're not good at telling the stories. Right. And, and I kind of level myself out sometimes as well in those spots where I just don't know. I, well, I, I, I think this is a call. I think this is a call. I think Kim's <laughs> right. I think I should have called. Um, if you didn't I, fold on the flop, right. you should have called. Right. <laughs> what, what is Odin? Is it doing a GTO simulation or? Yeah. Odin is like a new, um, uh, it does it all for you. So it's already done. They've already done all of the um, pile work and they've put it into um, into a program where you can just plug it all in and it's already so you're just all re- done. It's looking through a database of answers as opposed to calculating on the fly. It, yeah, the re- yeah, right. <clears throat> yeah, right. Yeah. The reason right. I, I question is all of that, Well, all of that is balanced, but if they're not doing that, then does the call – is the call still right? I mean, mm. obviously, if it, if you're truly GTO, then it doesn't matter what they do. They cannot exploit you, but that doesn't mean that doing the GTO play is the optimal right. play. We th- – and I think another way of saying that, John, is that we have to be able to identify – if we're going to call this, we have to be able to identify at least one bluff that this player is making that we beat. Um, Because otherwise we can say we've narrowed them down to these two flush draws, but we don't see much up, but then they probably have those, right? (laughs) When they take the action. (laughs) Right. If they don't have the capability of, and to me, the only other hand that actually makes sense. And I'm not sure most players turn this into a bluff, but is like, jack 10 with a diamond makes a lot of sense to me if you Mm -hmm. have jack if you have 10 of diamonds with a jack x um and and you're like this player is has ace king a lot when they've been betting the way they've been betting i want to get them off a king i'm turning my jack into a bluff i could see some players doing that but that is a pretty high level play Mm -hmm. that i'm not sure a ton of players have in them. So it's ultimately, it's hard to like, it's hard to assign that to just somebody randomly who has nine hands, you have nine hands with. Right. But can you randomly assign it to a player in this pool? Right. Cause I mean, that's all you can really do is on average is it do enough players do this such that that's possible. I would say that would be whole- rare. Yeah. And but the problem is holding the ace of diamonds in your hand. I mean, it's so hard to find true value for this shove. Right, right. That's right. that's it. So that's hard. that's it. Like, what is if they are a thinking player? What is their value target? With with every unless it's actually and even if it is like you say, Chris, if it is the queen ten of diamonds, then you there's so many other ways they could be getting those chips out of you. Right. Um, if you don't have the nut flush at that point, yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it was a weird hand. Um, yeah, probably made weird by me by calling that check raise or, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think get, that, getting I myself think, in this in the first place. But <laughs> I think it was a fold on the flop most of the time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think on the flop, because I've got the cards that I have in my hand, that's probably going to help me not help that's probably going to steer me towards folding to the check raise just because i'm blocking more of those draw hands that i wanted to have when he makes it and so then i'm going to have that in my mind here and it's just going to feel like that aggressive strong play but you're right chris to exclude a lot of those super strong combos when he calls the turn so yeah it's a it's a tricky spot it's a tricky spot i don't think i i don't think i I don't know. I'm torn. I'm seriously torn here because it's, my my instinct my instinct says the story that's being told here is that this guy's bluffing on the river, 
and I can't really make the rest of the hand make enough sense for me to feel confident about calling with second pair, but, and I'm holding cards, like he shouldn't be bluffing, but, um, the action makes me feel like he's trying to get me to fold a king. It's really hard to find a value hand that he doesn't barrel on the turn. Mm. The, the two of clubs is the biggest blank in the deck. Yep. And like, what is he possibly got here that he doesn't barrel on this turn? Mm -hmm. Except maybe King 10 of not diamonds. Mm -hmm. I mean, Queen 10 of not diamonds. I mean, I don't know. Right. I mean, I don't, I just don't see wh why he wouldn't barrel this turn once he's check raised you on the flop. Agreed. Well, to my mind, the one, the biggest takeaway I'm taking from this is that whenever Chris puts a hand into our forums, <laughs> it makes me aware that I do not study enough. <laughs> you and me both, John. <laughs> you and me both. It's funny. Some Every once in a while, I pull a hand out of the forums for the show, and I'm like, oh, this one will be a breeze. We'll just, you know, like, I think I know what the right answer is here. And then we get these ones from Chris, and it's like, we could talk about this for 45 minutes. I know less at the end of it than I did at the beginning. I am less confident about everything I thought about poker now than I was at the beginning. Good good call, Chris. But that's actually the way you learn, right? You, you yeah. have to break down your false assumptions first and then start building your foundations. It's true. It's true. And I, I like it when we, we talk about this all the time. You know, you need to disagree with people to learn or, or for them to learn. And so if you're in a community like this, learning together, Part of it is disagreeing. Part of it's finding areas where you don't think you're right and sharing that. Um, it takes being vulnerable and sharing the times when you're not sure in order to Actually, I, th I think you're all wrong about that. With you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. That's too good a note not to end on. Does anyone else want to throw something in before we uh, wrap it up here? Well, then I would just love to thank Website Amp, Running Aces, Hotel, Racetrack, and Casino, particularly this time Chris and Kim, who did a lot of great stuff in the forums there, but also John and Stu and everybody else. All right. See you next week, folks. Thanks.